What's up, Supreme Bills family? How y'all doing? I'm here with a quicker video on how to set up the NVIDIA Shield Pro 2019 version uh, as of March 2020. Earlier today, I did a long explanation-filled video that was live. It was about four hours long. You guys can feel free to check that out. I will link it in the description below if you're one of those people that wants to understand a lot more of what it is that you're doing. But if you don't, this is the video for you. We're going to run through it as fast as possible, make the shield perfectly set up to be a streaming monster. So let's go ahead and get to it. back let's get started i'm going to kick right over to the shield and here we go so on the shield right this is the very beginning from the start i wiped out everything i did earlier that i spent four hours doing i'm starting from right here the only thing you missed was the startup logo so when you get to your shield for the very first time startup logo happens you come to the screen and you choose whatever language is best for you i am in the united states Choose English for the United States. I already have it plugged into a Ethernet cable, but if you did not and you had it plugged in and you were using Wi Fi, you would have had to set up your Wi Fi right there. Same as setting it up on anything else, a cell phone, whatever. It, uh, it just goes. All right. Um, from there, it's going to ask you to sign into Google. So you're going to click your Shield Remote, which I'll come back real fast and just show you. You, this is the button that you're going to hit almost all the time. All right. It's when I say hit your select button, it's that button in the center there. All right. So we'll go right back to the shield. And I am going to go ahead and click on sign in. And I'm going to use my phone or computer because it's faster than typing everything out with the remote. I already am at my computer, but if you have your phone with you, you can use your phone. Just follow the instructions on the screen. So you're going to go to Android tv.com forward slash setup and you're going to enter the code that you see on the screen there whatever yours is into the web page i just entered it and then on the web page itself you'll choose your google account so i will choose mine and say sign in and it says success right on the shield pretty simple pretty easy if you want to do it on the shield, you can type it in with the remote, but it takes longer. All right, so at this point, you got to accept a bunch of stuff and choose your privacy settings. So I'm going to hit accept on the terms of service. Location doesn't really matter so much. It doesn't have GPS. It'll use your approximate location based on your internet. I say yes, because sometimes that helps with things like Netflix and whatever. Um, help improve Android. I usually say no, but you can say yes. It doesn't hurt. But it's, you know, you're trusting that you're sending diagnostic information and no personally identifiable information. I just say no. Uh, Google Assistant is up to you, but this device is great at being a Google Assistant device. If you don't know what a Google Assistant device is, it's basically using the Google voice searches for things. I use it. I like it. It's fine. I'm going to say continue. If you don't want to use that, you don't have to. Um, services and privacy. So it says a few things you should know right here, right? We're going to say continue. Get personal results. I turn that on. That's using the assistant on the remote. So it'll tell me like what my calendar has, how long it'll take for me to get to work if I ask my shield, stuff like that. So I turn that on. If you don't use those things, you can leave those off. It's fine. Then you get your little initial setup of, you know, what's going on here, uh, things you can do with the shield. You go to the end of that. Then you have to agree to NVIDIA's terms of use. You might as well agree because if not, you bought the shield for nothing because you can't use it. So just say agree and continue. And joining Shield Rewards is simple. You can just use your Google account and it'll work. So click on that. It's going to ask you for your year of birth at this point. And um, you click there. You just select the year. It just wants to know when you were born. I'm doing that right now and merging that back in. And so at this point, you're at this screen after you enter year of birth. Here it's asking you if you want to add your favorite apps. It already has YouTube, Netflix, Prime Video, and Plex. But if you have any of these other apps, if you're a YouTube TV subscriber, you would get that. If you have Disney Plus, get that. PlayStation View is gone now. It's wiped out, so I don't know why that's even still there. Um, but 
I have Hulu, so I'm going to add that. Don't add anything you don't have. But, you know, if you have kids, uh, go ahead and add YouTube Kids. That's fine. Uh, if you have Spotify, add that. I can use HBO Go. Um, I don't have a Pandora. I can use Showtime Anytime. Whatever you have that you want to use, I could do Stars. That's fine. Um, I like Twitch. And other than that, that's it for me. So I'm done. So you move over to the right when you're finished with however you want. You say continue, five apps selected. Choose it. My Shield is already up to date. If not, it would tell you that you have updates and you'll take them at that time and continue afterwards. But mine is up to date. So I'm going to say get started. At this point, it will complete the setup for you. Now you're going to get options that show up in here, all right? It says I have an unsupported Samsung USB drive. That's because I have an SSD plugged into the USB port on the Shield. I also have a RE i8 Plus remote plugged in, which I'm not using yet, but I will use soon. Um, all my ports are filled out on the Shield. I have everything plugged in that I want. But when you start fresh, the first thing you're going to notice is up here you have these notifications. You click on them, and it tells you what they are. So scan for TV channels is something that you can do if you have TV channels on your network, like a cable card or something of that nature, which I do, and I could do that later if I want to, but if you don't have that, like a cable card, HD home run, something like that, you can just X this out. It's, I can do that later, it's fine. Now this unsupported Samsung USB drive, I have to select to set up in a supported format. So I'm gonna click there. Uh, it always asks this when the first pop-up comes, I'm just gonna allow that, it's fine. Um, Samsung USB drive, right here, I'm gonna click it, and I can set it up as removable storage or as device storage. This is your first important decision about what you want. If you need more space for your internal storage, you're gonna to wanna to set it up as device storage. If you just wanna be able to plug this drive in and unplug it and only put files on it and not use it for storage for actual apps and games and stuff like that, then you would do removable storage. I'm gonna set this up as device storage because I wanna add 500 gigabytes to my 16 gigabyte shield. So I'm gonna tell it to set up as device storage. Um, you can continue. That's the first time it's told me that. Uh, but I'm going to just say OK. Format as device storage. It's fine. I know it's not slow. It, it's probably because it was already formatted as device storage. And it doesn't know what's going on. But it should be fine. I'm going to move the data now. I just did that like a few hours ago and it didn't tell me that. All right. So now it's there. I have my device storage. Both I have 12 gigs plus 492. So that is 504 gigabytes of total space, which is a lot. Um, any other drive you have that's an SSD drive that you plug in will work. I choose the Samsung T5s. And links for everything that I have and I'm using here will be in the description below this video. So you guys can check it out, um, including, the US, uh, including the HDMI cable because NVIDIA doesn't give you one in the box. Um, so there we go. That's done. Storage is done. I'm going to back out of there. All my little numbers on the top are gone, so I'm all set. From there, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to settings at the top. You want to change some settings around. So I'm going to click on settings. And these are your quick settings. We'll get into that later. You want to go down to your general settings. You can skip over network and internet. It doesn't really matter because you're either connected with Wi-Fi or you're connected with uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, if you have Wi-Fi, it'll tell you some information. With the Ethernet, it's just going to tell you your IP address. Um, remotes and accessories is basically just where you would go to see standard shield accessories. Like if you have a shield controller or a remote, it'll show you the battery level and that it's connected. You can pair another shield accessory, but this is only remotes or controllers that are uh, shield branded. All right. So they're the, either this controller, uh, this remote that I have here, or the NVIDIA Shield uh, gaming controller. There's only two things you get there. That's it. Um, you also can add Bluetooth accessories. So you can add like Xbox One uh, controllers, the newer ones that have Bluetooth would be fine. Uh, the newest uh, update to the Shield will allow you to add the Xbox Elite controller version two as well. So I have one of those. I don't have it down here, but I have one. Um, and you can disconnect Bluetooth accessories that are connected. 
The other option you have is the customize menu button, and that's for your Shield remote. And basically what this is, I'll show you real fast, is this button right here. If my face is in, it takes that out of focus. That's the menu button. You can customize this to whatever you want on the Shield, okay? Just plain and simple right out of the box. And doing so is done right here on this menu. So you can make it do whatever you like. There's no mute button on here, so a lot of people like to use this for a mute button. But I find the volume up down is fine. You know, I just hit hold down and it goes down fast. Hold up, it goes up pretty fast. I kind of like it being able to open settings from anywhere. But you can make it do some interesting things, like with AI um, enhance, enhancing, things like that. You can make it show you half of a preview screen for AI enhanced or not AI enhanced and what the difference looks like for the upscaling. Um, but I generally like to either do that or leave it on open settings. So I'm not going to mess with that, but I wanted to show you what you can do there. And that's pretty much it for the remotes and accessories section. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, I skipped over device preferences because that's where the bulk of everything is. But we'll so we'll get to that last. When you go to apps, all right, on your app settings here, you can. This is where you can find all your apps, and you can force close them, clear cache if you need to, things like that. Uninstall things under see all apps. You get app permissions and special app access. Um, in app permissions, you can check like what apps have permissions to certain things if you're worried about stuff like that. Um, but see all apps is where it's at in here. So what happens in here is you can see apps that are on the device. Okay. And so let's say Amazon Music. I don't use that. I can click on it, uninstall it. Just take it off the shield, save some space. A gallery for photos and videos on the shield. It's not something I'm going to use. I'm going to uh, disable it because I cannot uninstall it. So I will do force stop, clear cache, clear data, and then disable. It has to stay there, but it won't show up anymore until you enable it. Uh, if you wanted to enable it again, Google Play Movies and TV. I'm not actually ordering anything from there. I could delete it. Only delete things that you know what they are, and you're definitely not going to use them. So Google Play Movies and TVs. I'm going to do force stop and uninstall that I'm not going to use it um, you can go through and check these things out all right see what you won't use or what you might use and anything that's disabled will show up here and you can re-enable it you can also go to show system apps and you can see things that are installed on the system do not touch any of these things to remove them or disable them unless you know what they are but i can show you some things in here that i would get rid of it's only like one or two just to help you out real fast. The Plex Media Server. I'm not, that is, if you want to use the Shield as an actual Plex server, you need that. If you're not going to use the Shield as a Plex server and you just want to watch Plex on it, you don't need that. So I'm going to force stop that and uninstall it. All right. I have my own Plex server, so I don't need that. And that's really it. That's the only one in there. I'm going to back out from that. That's it for the app section. And your accounts and sign-in is just, I have one account there. If I wanted to add an account, I could. And it's going to ask me if it's a Google or NVIDIA account. So you could add a second email account if you have certain apps you already paid for on two separate emails. This is where you do it with Google. Um, but I'm going to back out of that because I'm only using one right now. And last thing on the settings, we're going to go to device preferences. In device preferences, you find the bulk of all the settings here. The first thing that I want you to do is at the top, you're going to go to about and you're going to scroll down near the bottom and go to build. All right, and you're going to keep pressing that until it says you are now a developer, like it does right now for me. Okay, then you're going to press back, and you're going to go down to developer options, scroll down to your transition animations. They'll all say 1x right here transition, animator, sim, uh, and, and window animation scale. Change all these to 0.5, it makes all the menus and motion much snappier, and the shield has a processor that can deal with that just fine. All right, that's all you need in here. You can leave everything else alone.
All right, now we're back in device preferences. We're gonna to go to display and sound. So you can see that I am at 4K and basically 60 Hertz. AI upscaling, you can check this out. What I do is turn on AI enhanced and then set it to whatever you like. <laughs> if you wanna see the maximum amount of AI enhancement, you can go to high. Some people sometimes find that to be a little too sharp. So medium's default. I'm gonna to go to high for right now, but play with this. It's okay to change this when you see things that you like or don't like on it. The fastest way to check this and what the difference is, is to go to YouTube and find a 30 FPS video on YouTube, one that says 30p, and play it. Um, you can find a lot of cartoons like that, things like that. And you'll be able to, I'll show you later how to split the screen in half and see the difference uh, using AI Enhanced. All right. Um, and right here, if you enable the demo mode, that automatically changes that button I showed you to toggle between AI and basic. All right. Um, so it says press it to toggle between AI and basic, hold it to toggle the side by side view, which is what you can do on certain videos to toggle side by side view if you want to see what the AI enhancement looks like. That's basically it in AI enhancement. And right now it says active no because the content's unsupported. This only supports. 720p and 1080p 30 fps videos and as of right now it's not available in every app but it is supposed to be added to more and more things all the time so the ai enhancement i could just tell you off the bat it's pretty awesome uh it's definitely a better enhancement than the standard works really nice so i'm going to back out of here and power control this is also important under display and sound i leave all of these on on my tv because what this does is if I turn on the shield, so when the shield wakes, TV turns on. When the shield wakes on one touch play, it changes the input to the shield. So if you were last on say your Xbox and you turn on the shield, you, it, the TV's gonna get a signal from the shield that says, hey, I'm trying to, trying to get you your attention and it's gonna switch the input on your TV to the shield's input automatically. These things just make your life easier under most cases. You can turn off the TV when the shield goes to sleep, Wake the shield when the TV power is on. Uh, make the sh uh, when sleep shield turns oh turns your when TV power is off. So if you if you power off the TV but forget to touch the shield, it'll still turn off the shield. Put it to sleep at least. And same thing, sleep the shield if you change your input. Some TVs give a problem here where maybe your TV might be turning on or off by itself. It's due to this, and in that case, you can try to turn these on and off one by one by seeing what they do and see which one is causing it and leave that one off. The other thing you have here is IR, all right? So you can set up IR for the TV and IR for a receiver or a soundbar. And basically this shield remote comes with IR built in. This little remote can basically control your TV, your soundbar and your shield all in one. It's basically a remote that you don't really need another remote besides this one once everything's set up to take care of your system. So if you go in here, you can see set up IR for TV. You can search for a brand, go to popular brands, and it'll just run you through steps on how to uh, make sure that it's controlling your device. Same thing for a receiver or a soundbar. All right. Once you've set up your IR for your receiver and soundbar or, or TV or both, okay, you're going to be able to mess with that in the sound controls in a minute. Then you have advanced display settings. In here, on your next step, you can choose to match content color space, so it automatically just switches between 2020 and 709. Rec 2020 is HDR, 709 is SDR. Um, you know, you, you can turn this on if you have an HDR TV, um, because it's a, going to try to take you out of HDR and put you in HDR when it recognizes that a video or content on your screen is HDR, uh, is actually has HDR, and when it doesn't, it should take you out of it. I find that it works pretty good um, on when I do it, so I can do that. You see it messed with the stuff there a little bit. I'm not gonna do it right here on the shield because I'm on a monitor. And if you notice in the background, you can see that my icons get super, super bright like for Netflix and YouTube. But I find that it makes it a little bit harder for me to show you display inputs uh, because my monitor itself is not, it is HDR actually, but uh, it's like a very low lit HDR and it just doesn't work great on my monitor. But if you have an HDR TV, turn that on. Uh, it'll do wonders for you. Um, custom display mode will allow you to change um, if you want 
different resolutions. If your TV is 4K, but you, only, you want to make sure it only plays in 1080p, things like that, you can set it to different resolutions, different um, color spaces, all kinds of stuff in here. But generally, leave that alone unless you know what you're doing with it, then you can mess with it. And adjusting for overscan is if your shield is not picking up the full width of your TV screen um, and your TV does not have a setting to allow you to fix that, you can do that with the shield, you know, bringing your edges out, top to bottom, left and right. That's what that's for. I'm going to back out of that. I'm going to go to volume control. All right. This is, you can use CEC for volume control. I would enable that. And fixed volume, leave on. That means that the shield itself, is volume is always full. And you're adjusting volume based on your sound bar or television. And when adjusting volume with voice, if you choose to use that, you can set it to increments. So you know how your TV has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you say, hey, volume up, and you use the right code words for it, it'll go up by one level or two levels or five levels or 10 levels. I generally just leave it at one. I, I hardly ever use my voice to change that because it's just so fast to press the button. And here's your setup IR. So once you've set up your IR before, um, over here under CEC control, right, and you set up your TV and soundbar from earlier, you can go down to volume control here, and in setting up IR, you can tell it, select a device that outputs sound from the shield. So it wants to know where you're hearing it. So if it is the, the soundbar or receiver or home theater system or just your TV, select that, because that's going to tell the shield which uh, volume to adjust from which device when you press the button. So you need to do that to make sure that it's adjusting the correct volume. All right, I'm going to back out from there. and. After that, system sounds on or off. That's just little sounds as the shield is going. And you have advanced sound settings. Um, audio video sync. If for some reason you're, you're not seeing, with, and this is across the board, not just in a single application. If the lips don't match up to voices and things like that, usually due to sound bars or sound systems, you can go in here and you'll see this ball drop and you're able to make an adjustment so that as the ball touches the plane there, the sound should be going off. And if it's not, you would slide the slider bar around until it is, and that should fix the problem for you. So that's what that's for. USB audio mode, just leave it alone. Unless you're outputting audio to, uh, through USB, you don't need that. Um, so leave that alone. If you are outputting it, don't just change it to 5.1. Only do that if you actually have 5.1 surround sound through your USB. This is not what your sound bar is or any of that stuff. That's a totally different scenario. So I would just leave this alone in general, okay? Play comfort noise on HDMI. It's on by default. Leave it on. Just prevents hissing sounds or, you know, extra sounds on your HDMI input when nothing else is on. Leave on Dolby Audio Processing. Um, available formats. So leave this on auto. Basically, it detects the formats that your device can play. So if you have a sound bar that can play Dolby Atmos, it will give you Dolby Atmos sound if the video that's playing has Dolby Atmos. And if it doesn't, it's going to find another format that it does have and it can use. And I find that this works fine. I've never had an issue with it. The only time I would ever recommend changing this to something else is if you know that, you, let's say, your video has Dolby Atmos, but it's not giving it to you. Then you can go to manual and you can select the ones you want. But otherwise, the shield works great on auto. We're done there. Stereo upmix. All right, so this is on or off as far as upmixing stereo to 5.1. I find that this works pretty well, even though it's off by default, I believe. I turned it on. Uh, if an app is giving you, uh, only one app is giving you out of sync audio to lips and stuff like that, then turn it back off because I have seen a few apps have trouble with that setting and turning it off seems to fix it. All right, that's it for your advanced sound settings. And you're done with display and sound completely. I'm going to back out of display and sound. We're going to go to system. So quick settings. In the beginning, I told you about quick settings, which are up here under your settings. You can change these and set whatever you like on them. But I find the ones that are here, I generally just leave them alone. You really only need sleep now and restart. You don't really even need AI upscaling here. But sleep now and restart, you should always leave there. All right, so we're going to go back into device preferences. And we're going to go to system. Customize quick settings. So you can turn on or off whatever you want in here. You can take a look through it, decide whatever you'd like, uh, and turn it all on and off. I just don't find many of these to be all that useful up there personally. But if you do, feel free to add them. Do whatever you like up there. It's fine. Like if you 
a constantly connecting and disconnecting a shield accessory. I could see that you might want to have that there. Um, restart Wi-Fi is good if you have one of those DHCP leases and you leave your shield in sleep and the um, and you're connected via Wi-Fi. And let's say your your router has changed your IP address. When your shield wakes up, it still thinks it's on the old IP address. So if you're not getting internet on the shield, you could click the restart Wi-Fi and that would do that. So that might be useful in that case. I'm connected with Ethernet. I don't need it. It's fine. Um, but you can do all this kind of stuff, all right? So whatever you want to do in here is fine. I leave it alone. It doesn't really matter. Now, NVIDIA Share is a way to record or stream uh, your devices. I recommend turning this on. And if you see that on, it says hold home button to access. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And I'll show you what it does afterwards. The LED brightness is just the brightness of the LED on your shield itself. There's a little green LED on it. You can turn it off if you don't like it. I leave it on high, it doesn't bother me. Processor mode, leave it on max performance all the time. Fan mode is still quiet on cool, so put it on cool. Also, if you definitely, absolutely make sure you put it on cool if you're putting this inside of some kind of entertainment system and not giving it a lot of fresh air. That'll make the fan spin faster, keep the device cooler. So I leave it on cool even outside in the open. It's not loud at all. Um, USB mode, leave it on auto. And these are interesting. So your USB ports, all right, you can have the power going to them even when the shield is off. That's how it is by default. Or you can say when the shield goes to sleep, I want the power to go off on these things. So I have my Samsung SSD plugged in to one, right? If I, if I leave this on, my Samsung SSD is running 24-7. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. It doesn't really matter too much. As long as it's in a cool environment, it's not going to get crazy hot. Um, but you can turn these off. This is really all preference. Any hard drive you plug in, uh, especially if it's a thumb drive and you do not have an extension cable so that the thumb drive is plugged directly into the back of the shield, that thumb drive gets very hot plugged right into the shield because the shield's USB ports get hot. I recommend to always plug that drive into the USB port away from HDMI going to be the coolest port and I would also turn that off when the shield goes to sleep if you are using a direct plugged in thumb drive because it's going to extend the life of your thumb drive I don't really recommend you plugging th thumb drives right in if you do use one get a USB 3.0 extension cable so that it's not directly in the shield and has a little space it's not getting burnt up that's my recommendations in here storage we kind of saw already um, I can do a whole other video more advanced on how to mount network storage, uh, but I, I showed you how to already, if you plug in external storage, this is where you're going to go to find it and format it however you want, either internal or external. Remember guys, anything you format as internal, leave it there because anything else you plug it into, if I take that drive out and plug it into Windows, Windows can't access it. So just leave it there. All right. Um, home screen, you can do a lot of stuff here. You can customize your channels. Uh, enable video previews, audio previews. You can reorder your apps from your app drawer, reorder your games in your app drawer. Um, and this is just licenses, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you about the channels right now since we're here. All right, so we'll go back out. On your home screen, you have channels. Your apps is a channel. It gives you Netflix by default as a channel. YouTube's a channel. Um, you get a Google Play Music channel, another YouTube channel. And you see it's kind of dumb that the YouTubes are separated, in my opinion. You also get this featured channel. And you can also get to customize channels from here, but and you can press to the left in your remote. If you want to get rid of a channel, you just go all the way to the left, get rid of it. I don't like the featured one. If you want to move a channel, so I'll be on YouTube trending. I'll go to the left, press my center button, move it up. Now my two YouTubes are together. I click on my center button, and I don't really care about Google Play Music being on my home screen as a channel. I'm going to remove it. So now I just have apps. Netflix, YouTube recommended, YouTube trending. When you sign into your YouTube, it's going to give you more personalized things. I'm not signed into my YouTube account, really. So it's giving me all, I don't know what that's giving me exactly. But stuff that doesn't really uh, pertain to what I actually watch on YouTube. Netflix, I'm not signed in either. So it's just giving you generic stuff here. But as you add more apps, some apps will be able to have channels. And you can customize the channels, which you can do from right here. or We'll go back to the settings real quick and we will go ahead and go back into device preferences and home screen. And I'll show you it from there because we were already there, just finishing the menus here.
customized channels. So see, Google Play Music is now off. Netflix is on. YouTube has two channels. So you can get rid of one if you want, um, whatever you want to do. Then the promotional channel has one channel. That's the app spotlight. I turned it off. So as you add more apps, more things will show up here. Some of them you have to sign in for in order for them to show up. But they'll start showing up and you can customize them and move them around however you want on your home screen. It's very nice. It's easy once you get used to it. Enabling video and audio previews just means that on the home screen here itself, uh, certain apps will allow you when you stand over the app like this, it will play some video for it and audio like a preview of the film or the TV show. Netflix doesn't do that, but Hulu does. I think uh, some do. A few apps do. Um, that's all that is. So I leave that on. It doesn't bother me. Uh, to see a little preview, I may want to click something from the home screen. It's fine. All right. Um, and then you can reorder your apps in your app drawer right here by moving them around if you want. I generally leave them alone for right now. Same thing with games. You can reorder them if you have a bunch of games. That's this whole menu. In a nutshell, it's done. Keyboard, don't touch it. Leave it as lean back launcher. By far the best keyboard. Um, date and time, you should be pulling that in from your service provider. Once you're connected to the internet, that should be automatic. If it's not, you can adjust it, but automatic date and time should be what's used and it should work. If you want 24 hour time format in the US, you can change it. If you're in Europe or wherever else that uses 24 hour time format, but you like 12 hour, you can swap it off right here too. Um, language, again, we set that in the beginning. You can change your language to another language here. Google Assistant, that's what I was telling you about with the speaking in. You can set that up in there if you want to as well. I'm not going to go through all the craziness of this, but uh, it's your account. You can view the permissions. Um, in here, one thing I would say is turn off block offensive words. because It's really nice to hear your computerized voice speak curse words back to you. It's pretty cool. So turn that off. Um, save search filter. You can leave that off too. And it'll tell you what apps are searchable using um, the voice. So if you have a Plex library, you can search for a movie or a TV show using your voice. Um, pretty good. And you can view the permissions of it, but that's going to take you to a web page. I don't need to go through all that right now. You guys can set that up if you want. Screensaver, semi important, guys. You know, you want your shield to have a decently long life. So you want to know when to start the screensaver. This is for good for your TV and the shield. When the shield is off or in screensaver mode or sleeping, it's using less power. The device stays cooler. When you go into a screensaver, your TV is using less brightness, less of its bulbs. When you put it to sleep, the TV turns off. So you're saving power for yourself, saving your device's lifespan as well. The important thing is to be real with yourself here. So when it comes to the screensaver part, you can tell it when to start. The screensaver, doesn't matter, whatever, 15 minutes of you. If that's if you walk away, when does the screensaver itself turn on? That's all it is. So I'll put 15 minutes for mine. That gives me a little time to walk away and come back if I wanted to do something. You can leave it on five and just press the button on your remote and it wakes right up. It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with. But here, put device to sleep. If you're not a person that's going to manually put the device to sleep every time you're done, be honest and real with yourself. Make sure that you leave this on somewhere and not something ridiculous. So you want to say maybe put the device to sleep after an hour. Okay, cool. If so if you're not doing anything for an hour, the shield's going to turn off, which is in turn going to turn off your TV. If you set this to never, all right, you're only hurting your lifespan of your devices if you're not always going to turn it off manually. So leave this on something. All right. I find I think the default is like 20 minutes or whatever. I think that's a little too quick because you might be making some food and you pause a TV show. You want to come back to it. Um, you know, things like that. Leave it for an hour or whatever it is. Whatever is good for you. Everyone's different, right? Start now, sleep now, stay awake on music on is fine. Um, and start now is just going to show you what it looks like. Sleep now, open the device to sleep. So I don't want to do that since I'm showing you how to use it. Location, we already told it what to do. You don't even need to worry about that. Usage and diagnostics, we turned off in our initial setup. Location, I left on. If you wanted to turn off location, you can, or you want to turn on usage and diagnostics, you can do it here. This is totally pointless. It just tells you about Chromecast. Security and restrictions is an important one. So in security and restrictions, unknown sources. You're going to want to be, remember to be able to go back to that if you're using apps that are not in the Play Store. You click unknown sources. And it's going to show you apps that you have installed. I don't have any yet that are not from the Play Store. And it's going to allow you to let them install other apps for you as well. All right. Then verify apps. This is all about security sort of. So if you're installing apps that aren't from the Play Store, 
this is going to have the Play Store and Google stuff look at these apps and decide if they're good for you. Okay. Sorry, and I'm not sure how to help with that. Well, I said the word, so spoke to you. Go to sleep. Um, what it will do is it may remove apps that you don't want it to remove. So I usually turn it off, but that's because I only get apps from sources that I know are good. If you're one of those people that installs tons and tons of apps all over the place and you're not really sure about them and you just check stuff out, maybe you leave it on. I'm turning it off. Don't say I told you to turn it off. I'm telling you, for me, I turn it off. Um, Allow all Bluetooth pair requests is fine. Make passwords visible. That's entirely up to you. That's like passwords on your screen when you're typing them in, stuff like that. Um, I like to leave it on because it's my own personal device at home. Nobody's watching me typing my passwords. And I like to see that I'm typing things correctly. So that's fine. Um, Bluetooth LE privacy, leave that on. And that's it. Really, uh, you don't need to create a restricted profile at all. You're good there. Accessibility, okay. Um, leave this alone unless you absolutely need it. Uh, to you know, this is for like hearing and hearing impaired, vision impaired. If you have people that need that stuff, go ahead and mess with it. If not, leave it alone. Um, reset is going to reset the shield back to standard. So that's it. We've ran through everything in device preferences, which means we've basically gotten through the entire setup of the settings menu. From here, what are you going to do? You're going to want to get apps, right? And you're going to want to see how to add them around. So let's go. You have the Google Play Store right here. You can choose it this way, or you can go over to your apps menu on the left, click it, and you can go up to get more apps or get more games on the top here. Get more apps just takes you into the Play Store. Get more games still takes you into the Play Store, but the gaming section of the Play Store. So I'm gonna go to get more apps, and I'm gonna search for some apps that I want. All right, for me, I like certain apps, okay? So I am going to go ahead and search for the ones that I want. Also, if you go to my apps, you'll see that there's a bunch of apps already installed whoops, that have updates. And I'm going to tell it to update all of those. They're already here. Let's get them out of the way and update it. So if there's updates available, you can do that here. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the search feature. And I'm going to use my voice, which is why I put it on there so I could show you guys how to do that. So if I go over to my microphone and I click the center button, I will be able to search for what I want. The first thing I want to get myself is analytics speed test. I want to make sure my settings are good. And I also use that later to get apps that are not in the Play Store. So I am going to press my center button. It's going to ask you to allow. Analyti Play Store. Oh, oops, it's not Play Store. I'm sorry. Analyti speed test. There you go. So it pops right up. Click it, hit install, and it installs. Then I press back. While it's installing, it'll still install. I'll go right back over because this is faster than typing. And I'll use my button again. Send files to TV. Did I not click it? Send files to TV. Nope. Send files to TV. There you go. So I'll click that and I'll install it. You can type these things in too. Uh, these are the two ways that I recommend people get apps outside of the Play Store onto their Shield using send files to TV and Analytics speed test. I know it seems a little weird if you're not used to it or you haven't seen any other videos on it, but you know if you're new to the Shield, uh, it can be a little difficult with newer updates to get stuff on the shield. But if you use these two methods, you should be good. There's other things you can do as well. But you can just simply take a USB stick, download a bunch of uh, Android apps on your PC, put them on the USB stick, plug them into the shield and install them that way too, it works. All right, so that's done. I'm gonna go back. I would need a file manager, right? File Explorer. I like this one right here. It's a very simple one. Um, if you like more in-depth stuff, Explore is great. Solid is another good option, and FX. These would be the three I would try if you like more complex file explorers. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to get File Explorer because that's all I actually need, and it's really simple. Okay. 
So I got that. Let's go back again. And let's say, instead of searching, I want to be back in the Play Store under Apps. And let's go and check out just some things that they have there just so you can get an idea. So Pluto TV is cool, right? It's got free, free TV. I can click that and install it. Who doesn't want some free TV? Um, Tubi, free movies and TV. Why not? Install it. It's free. You know, these are all up to you. If you don't like them, see, this is rent, buy, or watch movies with no fee. No thanks. Uh, you know, if it's free, add it in and be fine with it. No problem. Zumo is very awesome movies and TV. All right. Gives you a nice guide, gives you some stuff, and it's all free. Install that one. I recommend these free apps for watching movies and TV. Um, this is all like your standard setup of options. Other than that, that's about it in there. You want to get some kind of like news apps. A lot of these you need subscriptions to, but you can get them. Um, you can search for anything in here. You can get started with games. Let's just say I'll take like Asphalt 8. If I click on this and I go to install. All right, I'll take it just for the heck of taking it. Um, you can install this game now, but it won't be playable without a gamepad. I understand. I just don't have a controller connected. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to be a huge download, pretty much. Um, actually, I guess not until I open it. I guess when I open it, it's going to install a bunch of stuff. All right. So that'd be a pretty big download. Um, but you can check out games, things that you want to, you know, might want to play. They have some actually pretty damn good games on the Shield. I'll do a whole gaming video on my gaming channel for that. Um, and again, fun for the family. So if you got kids, you can check these out. You just go through the store, decide what you like. Um, but this Play Store is a little bit limited um, compared to the regular Play Store. Okay. I already have Netflix. I'm updating my Hulu. Um, I installed Stars already. No, I should have. It, did, it didn't seem to do the installs when I was doing them before. I can do Epics. That works with my TV package. So it's kind of like whatever whatever works for you. HBO Go I have. Um, I can install that. I thought I said to do these in the beginning, but for some reason it didn't. Flex, I know I have. Yeah, that's already there. And, you know, that's pretty much it. File Commander is another cool one. You can check out all kinds of different file options, uh, file managers. For the purpose of keeping this simple and as short as it can be, I'm just doing it this way. All right. And then you have categories. So that's pretty much it. And you can search for stuff. Like one thing we didn't see here is Cody. A lot of people on this uh, channel like Cody. So I'm going to search for that and I'll get it. Cody. And boom, there's Cody. Click install. That's about it. And I got a bunch of apps. How do I want to arrange them? I got to go back to my home screen for that. So on this as well, you have the home button, okay, which is this circle right here. That's the home button, back button. Those two you'll be using a lot. So the home button, no matter where you are, will just take you straight to home. If you tap it once, if you tap it twice, it will bring up recent items. So if you have a bunch of apps open, it will, you'll be able to quit them from here. All right. But you may want quick access to things up here. And I don't like the way that this is arranged. I rearrange it all the time. Um, you can add an app to favorites this way, or you can go over to your app drawer, click on it to open it, and hold your center button down to get something on your home screen. So let's just say I want to add Cody to my home screen. Hold it down on center button. And now I have the option to add to favorites. And when you add it to favorites, now it shows up up here. And once it's here, if you want to move it around, again, hold down your center button, go down to move, and slide it over to wherever you want it. Okay? So, like, I want to put, I have a Netflix account. I want to put Netflix up here. Uh, I like Prime Video. I have a Prime Video account. I want to put that over here. All right? Um, I like to use my play stores to separate my games from streaming. So I use that kind of in the middle and then the other play stores I get. So, you know, you can move YouTube. I'm just breaking it down for what you can do. And I don't even really want Voodoo on my home screen. So I'll remove it from favorites and it'll just sit in the back there. And that's really it. 
So now my Play Store breaks up things that I would stream versus games up here. Um, like I got a number one, so I got a new notification. Can't update Android TV core services. Try again. So let's go back there and hit update. And it's installing. Good, it worked. So you need that. Good that it worked. I'm going to back out of the Play Store completely now. I'm back on the home screen. I've got my apps. This is it. You're kind of set up and you can go ahead and look, it added 2B, it added, so you can remove all these things around. You see how they're all here? So I can go ahead and say, okay, I like my HBO Go. I want to move it up under, let's say, Netflix or YouTube. And stars I'll put under HBO Go. So your standard setup here is pretty much done at this point. Your shield is set up and ready to go, and all you got to do is get more apps from the Play Store if you're not interested in outside streaming apps and things like that, or, you know, apps that are not in the Google Play Store. You'd be done right here and be all set. It'd be no problem. But if you want to get all kinds of movie and TV show apps, you want to get apps that are for um, retro gaming, you know, emulators, all kinds of stuff that the Play Store doesn't have. If you want alternate Play Stores, I'm going to show you how to do that now at this point in the video. So if you're not interested in that, you're done with the video here. Thank you for watching. I hope I helped you. And you can, you know, go on and continue on with your shield from here and everything should run really nicely. If you want to watch those things, stay here and we're going to do it right now. Go back over here and we're going to go ahead and begin with the apps that I told you about earlier, which we installed already. The speed test is good just to have regardless, even if you're not going to install apps. But you don't need send files to TV at all unless you're going to install other apps. I'm going to go ahead and take these and add them to my favorites just because it's going to make it faster for us right now. All right. Those are going to be on my favorites in the home screen now. And I'll put them like, I guess, right after the Play Store, just so I know where they are. I'm moving the games all the way to the back. It's fine. Um, with Analyti, okay, I'm going to show you first how to get an app just using Analyti. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. I'll get Cinema HD, which is a very popular app. It's my favorite app, aside from using um, my own Cody Fork with Gaia uh, to watch movies and TV shows with. I'm going to open Analyti, all right, and it'll run a speed test for you, which is all good and, you know, fine, and you can let it do that if you want to, you know, see what it's doing. It's not going to hurt anything. My shield is doing pretty good. So, you know, this speed test will tell you, like, okay, I can stream... 720, 1080, 4K, 4K, uh, and 8K. So I can do all that on fine. Your results may vary. But if you click to the left on your remote, you'll see web check. If you go to web check, it's basically going to see can I connect to the web? Seems pretty damn simple. It's showing you all the kind of things, um, you know, connecting to google.com gives you statistics for that. We don't care about any of that. We're just going to go over to the web browser window. Okay. And we're going to click into it and we're going to wipe out what it says in here. And at this point, I'm going to be using the Re i8 Plus remote. Let me just slide back to that for you so you guys can see that. You, I'll have a link in the description for this below as well. It makes your life so much easier when you are typing on the shield because this remote all by itself is, has no numbers or letters or anything. So this even gives you a mouse control pad and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Helps you out a lot when you're typing. Um, so I'm going to be typing a lot of stuff here, like web addresses and things like that. So turn it on, and we'll get back here to start typing. All right. So I know the web address for cinema. It's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash cinema APK dot com. And now at this point, it's easier to just pick up your regular remote and move over to go and press enter. It's actually faster than trying to do it with 
this. This is really just good for typing in these situations. But typing, you type a lot more than you think if you're using a lot of, um, you know, searching apps and apps to you want to search for movies and shows. So I'm scrolling down this website until I find where it says install, download now. Or the latest, this, either one of these will work fine. So I'm going to grab the latest version APK. I have to allow what it's asking me for. And because it didn't do it right away, every time you give it a permission, you have to kind of start over. But once you give it that permission, it will stay. So now I'm back on the same link. I'm going to click it. And I'm, now I have to go and turn on these unknown sources to allow them to install apps. So again, I got to click it again. Once that's on, it's going to work. But now I won't have to do it in Analyti anymore. So let's see, it says downloading. And I'm kind of in the way here, so let me go ahead and just move myself, which I can't do from here. I have to do that from, hang on, from here. I'm always in the way, no matter where I'm at. I'm going to try to sit in the middle here, see how that goes. All right, um, I'm going to go down to install. Kind of hard to see through my capture card, but yeah, I'm on install. It installs the app. And that's it. And I'm going to just go down and hit done. I don't want to open it yet. So that's how you can get an app on um, using the Analyti speed test. I'm going to go back up to the top again in Analyti. Okay. And I'm going to get one more app. I want to get file linked. Okay. Um, because that's a good app. If you go on YouTube, different people have file linked codes and you can get a lot of apps pretty quickly and easily that way. So I am going to. Go to https colon forward slash forward slash file linked dot com. Okay. And I'm going to once again open up my, I'm going to use my actual remote. You go there and you will scroll down and you will see download file link. It'll download and ask you if you want to install it. And just make sure you go down, over, hit install, and done. I'm not going to open any of these apps yet. I'm just getting them. Now, the other way to get apps is with that send files to TV. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to back out until I'm done with Analyti. Gone. So we have send files to TV. When you click that, it's going to ask for some permissions. It will also tell you how to do it. If you need an Android phone for this or a Windows computer or a Mac computer, it does not work with iOS. So you can't use it with an iPhone, but you can use it with a Mac computer. And you would just go to sendfilestotv.com or Google search it, telling you that it needs a permission. So you're going to allow that permission. And it just opens you up to a send or receive. On the shield, you'll be receiving, not sending. You're going to be sending from your phone. So I'm going to kind of show you this. I'm going to hit receive, and it will stay there looking for files. On your phone, you can go to any web address you want to get an app from. So for instance, right now, I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, get the TV Zion app. But you guys can go on Google, find whatever apps you want, uh, you know, research, get them. I'll show you the ones that I get. So I'm going to go to their website, um, which is zionapp.live. So I'm there now, okay? and I can click the hamburger menu, and once I hit that hamburger menu on the top, download is right there. I'm going to download it, and I'm going to say download. Phones always let you download. I've downloaded it now down here, and all I have to do on my phone is install the same app, send files to TV, which I already have installed, okay, and it's in the Google Play Store, so it's uh, right here, okay. I'm going to open it. And you get the same looking menu, send or receive, except you're sending and the shield is receiving. So I'm going to hit send. Okay, I'll show you. Wait, I got to get my face out of the way. I hit send and you're going to go to your downloads, which is right here. And every app that you download is going to be in there. And I'm going to look for my Zion app, which I just downloaded. And I'm going to hit it. And let me go back. So now it's asking me what shield. I have more than one shield in the house. I know it's number three uh, right here. So I'm going to go back to here. 
and I'm going to press that shield three that I just showed you on the top, and you'll see on the screen what happens. Boom. Just sent that app right over. Now, you can download all the apps on your phone and send them all over in one shot if you want. It's all up to you. You don't have to use Analyti. I'm just showing you multiple ways that you're able to do it because someday one of these ways may not be here anymore, and I want you to have a few different ways, all right? Um, that works, okay? So it's done. What do I do now, though? I have it. This doesn't let you install. It just sends it over. So if you look here, I can click this, and I can click open, but it doesn't actually open. It doesn't do anything. So I'm going to back out of here. And remember that file explorer we got earlier? We're going to use that. I'm going to go to the apps. And I'm going to go down to file explorer. And I'm going to go into, I like this one for the purpose of this demonstration because it's very simple. You go to device, okay, go down to local, click on it, go to download. And there's the app I just sent over. Click on it. Install. That's it. Apps installed. Pretty simple, nice and easy, and you're back out of it. So those are your ways to do it. I'm going to go do one more thing with Analyti um, because I want to show you uh, the site. Right now, my HTTPS on my site is down. You don't have to wait for this. You can go right over to Web Check. <coughs> Move over. Right now, I can't use HTTPS. But normally it would be HTTPS on my website. I just have an issue right now with my certificates. So I am going to go back to my re remote. Again, I strongly recommend this. A link for it will be in the description below the video, along with the Samsung Drive, the HDMI cable, and the Shield itself. Everything that I am showing you in this video, links will be in the description below if you want to get them. So I have to change this to HTTP right now, but it will normally stay HTTPS. And it's going to be supreme builds.com forward slash APKs. And I'm going to say go with my regular remote now. And here I can go through different things that I have. What I want is and from here is my app store update to get another app store. And I just want my own fork of Cody. So I'm going to go to App Store and I'm going to get Aptoid TV. Okay. I'm just going to tell it to install it. Done. Now I'm going to press back and I'm going to go down to Cody. Click on Forks. Click on Krypton 17. And I'm going to get my SBMC fork. This is a plain fork of Cody. But why you want a fork, it never updates. It's at 17.6 and it's going to stay 17.6. If you're using regular Kodi from the Play Store, when 17 turns to 18, it updates on you. And if you have builds on there, it breaks them. When 18 goes to 19, it's going to break your builds on 18. So hold on to a fork for 18 if you want one. Hold on to a fork for 17 if you want one. Um, so I'm going to download the SBMC. And I'm going to install it. Oops. Hang on. Go. That's installed. I'm going to say done. I pretty much have every app that I want right now, aside from my own IPTV apps that I use for IPTV. And you may use different IPTV apps, or you might not use IPTV at all. I'm going to use the example for IPTV to show you how Firelink works because I have the four IPTV apps that I use in a file link. So I'm going to go back to my home screen, just keep pressing back, and we're going to go to that file link app we downloaded earlier, which is right here. When you open it, it's going to ask for some permissions, I believe. Nope, it's just going to tell me to enter the code. All right, I have a couple of codes. I got to get the right one for my IPTV apps. Let's go ahead and do that. And for me, that is, I'll use the regular remote for this, 3650-2600. You're going to search around YouTube and you'll find different people. Make sure you trust them because they can put any apps they want in here. So don't install apps from people you don't trust. You know, check out Juggernaut's YouTube channel. I trust him. 
He always has good apps. Um, if Storm ever releases her code, uh, she um, I trust her to have good, solid apps. If I make a file link, you can obviously trust me to have good apps. But if it's somebody that you don't know, or somebody that you don't trust, don't just go in there and use their apps blindly because you never know what they're giving you. All right. But that's the code for just my IPTV that I use. So I'm going to say done. And it takes me, these are my four IPTV apps that I use. So I'm just going to click it and it's going to download. Click the next one, it's going to download. Next one, it's going to download. Uh, if you see any of these things pop up, just dismiss. Next one, going to download. All right. Once they're downloaded, make sure the last one's still going. All right, boom, downloaded, right? Once they're downloaded, just click. It's going to end uh, you up. See, I don't have the settings yet, so we're going to have to go to settings, and we're going to turn on everything else that's in here. And now file length is allowed. It's going to make me do it again now. Click it, and now it'll let me do it because I changed the settings to on. So we'll install that. And we'll say done, and we'll go down to the next one. Install that. We'll say done. Click the next one. Just showing you how file linked works basically. We'll say done. And the last one is checkmate. We'll go down and install that. Done. All set. That's how you use file linked. You would go back. It's asking you if you're sure you want to enter a new code, you'd say yes. It'll still keep the code up there, but if you have another code, you can enter it and get apps from places that way. All right. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys is the other app store, which is Aptoid, okay, which I installed on here, Aptoid TV. When you open it, this one also gives you slight issue with permissions because it needs to update, but it can't update itself because it doesn't have permissions. Um, so you'll see you got to hit allow here, but that's not even the permission to install. Here it's going to say there's an update. All right. But now you can't do it. You got to go to your settings. Oops, didn't work for me. So I'm going to double tap the home screen. I'll close now. I can show you how to file that. You double tap the home button. I'm going to close Aptoid. Go back into apps. This is kind of a stubborn app in this way. So you're going to say every time it's going to say that. But uh, I can't see it so well, so it's messing me up. Let me close it again. This is only because I, I'm not on a regular TV here. Uh, back into apps. Aptoid. OK. I need to go to the settings. I wish I could see that. Yep, there we go. I got it. Aptoid. Once it's turned on, it will now let me do it. But I lost the chance for the update. So one more time, I'm going to double tap the home button, close this out, and open Aptoid. And now I will get the update. No problem, because I turned it on in permission. So we go to install. And Aptoid Market will, now that it's updated and ready to go, we'll have a bunch of apps on here that you cannot get in the Play Store. You can just move over to Discover. You can see top apps. So this T Movie Guide, I don't know. I'm guessing that's another, you know, APK for watching movies and TV shows. I don't use that one. Um, and there's other apps. Just don't get apps from here that you can get in the Play Store. Mobjo is a good one. That's not in the Play Store. All right, so you can install that. And you can say install. So that's like free TV. It's like IPTV with poor quality, but it's free. So that's fine. Um, you know, there's all kinds of apps in here, stuff that I don't even mess with, but you can install browsers. So if you want to have like the Chrome web browser, I can go up here. Allow. I can even use my voice in here. Google Chrome web browser. There it is. 
So I can take that and I can install it. And that's not actually in um not in the regular Shield Play Store. So say done. And that's it. You can get whatever you want in here. They got all different web browsers, stuff you can check out. And on the home screen, you can go down to categories and you can see like entertainment, shopping. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can mess around with in here. Um, one other thing I recommend you get from the regular Play Store if you're going to be messing around with streaming apps, always, 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 you should have VLC. And I'll go get that from the regular Play Store. VLC. Oh, I forgot to go to the home screen, right? Forgot to go to uh, VLC. Boom. Install that. The thing about VLC too, if you choose to use it as a player, like for IPTV apps or for cinema or Zion or anything, you need to actually open VLC because it has permissions in the beginning. You got to allow it those permissions. Once it has the permissions, it'll work. But if you don't open it first, it won't work when you try to use it as a player for other apps. So always open it at least once. And you can go ahead and just close it. Now you have all these apps, right? You're going to want to maybe set them up on your home screen, do whatever. That's fine. Um, that's entirely up to you. I find, you know, however you want to lay them out is all good. I'll add to favorites. Um, let's see. Like should already be nope not in favorites i'll add that to favorites so it's really all about what you know what you want there these are already in favorites live channels isn't but i can add that to favorites um you know any of these apps you want to do i'm just going to do them to kind of show you uh sort of a layout that i would use as an example so I already put that. And let's just take file linked. I don't really think you need the explorer up there personally, but you can if you want. Let's just do this. Right. Take Cody. That's already up there. We'll add Mobdro. Oh, Pluto I put up there, no. Add to favorites, SBMC, add to favorites. Eh, I think I have some files to TV up there already, yeah. So add whatever you want. Does, they'll, they'll give you as many as you want to have, all right? Doesn't really matter. Um, and I'll throw Zumo just for the heck of it. All right, oh, I opened Zumo, I didn't want to do that. Close that. Um, but now you can see you got to play next because I open Zumo. This anything that you watch, you can continue watching. So let's say you you sign into your Netflix and you watch season one, episode one, of you know uh, a TV show. It's gonna show up here, season one, episode two. You can just press it and take off from right there. You don't have to go to the Netflix app. So I like the play next feature. It's cool. So you can see all these other ones that get added in. Analyti even has its own thing. I don't need that there. That's I don't want to look at my old speed test. Um, you know, maybe you don't want these free ones up here, or maybe you like to search through them and see what you can play, but these are all free and you can watch all this stuff. Look, New Jack City, old movie, you know, you can watch a bunch of stuff in here. So, you know, free options are good options. But up here on your apps, I now have a whole mess of them. Okay, way too many. I wish they would give you two rows. You can change home screen things and launchers to do all that, but I prefer generally not to, but what I do is I put my live stuff first. I just want to kind of give you a general idea of a, you know, you don't have to lay it out like me, but maybe you're not sure, you know, what to do or you're a little, you know, uncertain. I take anything that's live streaming and I put it in the front, um, you know, somewhere in the front. So let's just say like stars. Well, that's not live. I'm talking about like live TV, Mobdro. I'm going to move it up here, but that's, and I put them usually from like best to worst as far as options. I also have HD Home Run, which I didn't get from the Play Store either, and I should have gotten 
So I'll go ahead and grab that real fast. Uh, you know, you don't need it if you don't have it. HD home run. Install that. And that's it. Go back to home. Go back to apps. HD home run. Add to favorites. And that's always my first icon, which is why I kind of got a little, I must get this. So, HD Home Run. And then I put my IPTVs. Uh, I also use the live channels because that pulls in channels from my HD Home Run as well. And it gives me a different interface to use with it. So, those are basically the two same things, but you get a different interface with it. Um, and then I take my IPTVs and basically in the order of how I use them usually. Um, and then I'd leave Mobjo as like a distant, you know, in case of emergency, break glass, Mobjo is here. But that's like the beginning of my setup. And then I start off with my favorite streaming services that are not live. So it's Netflix, you know, Prime Video. But I have my outside ones first, which will give me more links. So I can take Cinema. All right, put that right there. SBMC I'm going to use for sure because that's going to have my Gaia in it. So I'm going to move that. And that's actually going to be my first one. And then... I'll take Zion, if I can find it. There we go. And I will make that my last uh, one after cinema. Then we start with like Netflix. I, I like Hulu after Netflix. I use that next. So Hulu, that's just kind of how I do it. You guys do not have to follow this by any means, but I just wanted to sort of give you a general rundown of what I do. So it's Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video. Kodi, I honestly will remove from favorites right now because I'm not going to use it. But if you, this is Kodi 18, if you want to get an 18 build, you can put it there. But I don't use, I just use my own build in SBMC here. Um, you know, and then YouTube's there. And this kind of, like I said, all the app stores I would sort of put together. I would definitely move Plex up because I have a Plex library. So let's move that to um, after before YouTube. I kind of put YouTube last because it's not really a streaming service for movies and shows and stuff, but I still stream with it. And um, Twitch would go after YouTube because I like to stream. You know, I like to look at games. So YouTube and Twitch will go here, and then my app stores basically. If I want to use like you know HBO Go, Showtime, I'm going to remove them. But I just wanted to show you how many things you could put there. Like I don't I don't watch these enough to really put them up top. Um, I would get rid of Pluto also from my favorites. It's just, you know, but it is all up to you, all right? Um, but Aptoid, I keep up here, and I'll move that right after the Google Play Store. And then I would take, and Aliti helps me get apps, so that's there, but that's not really a uh, app store. So I'd rather put file link before Analyti. This is just my thought process. Then it's like, send files to TV is even, more of an app store than Analyti, so that's last. And then you got NVIDIA games. And any games you want to put after that, you can feel free to, you know? Um, you can get a games row up here too, uh, which I'll show you real fast. So like if I go to apps, I installed Asphalt, right? If I hold this down and I go to add to favorites, nope, I opened it, of course, didn't I? Yep. Me close this, close this, back to apps, here, hold it down. There we go, add to favorites. I, it's so hard for me to see on the thing, but now that it's on favorites, I thought it would give me a, it doesn't. I could have swear there was a games row, but I guess not. Thought there was so your your games will end up there if you have games. I'm gonna remove it, but 
I thought it gave me a second row for games. It used to at one point. I think that was on the old shields. It's been a while. But now I'm sort of set up. It's long, obviously, but it's still better than going in here and, you know, going through all this. The one other app I would say you could probably get, because if you're sideloading some apps, you may not find them in this section here, because they just haven't been set up with icons that work with Android TV operating system. So you're going to need an app that you can get from the Play Store. It's good to just have it. And just in case, it is Sideload Launcher. Just install that. It will show apps that don't show up. It'll also show apps that show up in your app drawer, but if the ones don't show up, you'll only be able to see them on Sideload Launcher. Um, so that's that. Now it's all about setting up these apps that I got from outside to finish off this setup, okay? So the first thing I'm going to start with, I suppose, is the more complicated one, which is going to be SBMC. This is, like I said, it's a Kodi 17.6 fork, and it's what I use with an add-on called Gaia, and I make my own little build myself with this. And I'm going to run through it as fast as I can, just giving you the instructions on how to set this up. you're familiar with Kodi, you're going to see the same thing right now when you launch it, All right? This has different graphics, but your home screen, stuff like that, is going to be the same. All right, first thing you're going to want to do here is go up to the settings cog, and you're going to go over to system settings, click on it, scroll down to where it says standard, and keep clicking until, oops, sorry, until you're on expert. And then you're going to go up to where it says, uh, it's version checking. It's telling me that there's a newer version. Just say okay. It will never update because it's a fork, so that's great. You're going to go to add-ons, turn on show notifications, and turn on unknown sources. You're going to say yes to that unknown sources because it's warning you. You're going to click back, and you're going to go down to file manager. And you can substitute Gaia with any add-on that you find online that you research or how to get uh, where repos are, repo addresses. You put them in the file manager. I'm going to say add source. And again, this is where the re comes in big handy again. I'm going to add this. I already know the address for Gaia, so it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash repo dot Gaia Cody dot com okay and i'm going to click okay and then i'm going to go down here and enter a name for it and i'll name it gaia and i'll say okay and then i'll go down and say okay all right now i've entered the source for the repo for gaia i'm going to click back click back again until i'm on the home screen Go down to add-ons, click it, go up to the package on the top left, click it. We're going to say install from zip file. And I created this Gaia, okay? Click on it. It finds the Gaia repository and the Orion repository. First install the Gaia repository. It will tell you that the repository is installed. At least it should. Even though there it goes. Now install from zip file. We'll go back to Gaia. And I always take the Orion one anyway because Orion is a dependency in Gaia. Even if you don't have an Orion account, it still installs Orion. So I like to have two possible places where Orion can install from in case any repo has a problem. The other one will have it. So we'll let that install. Boom, it's installed. It's all set. Once you have the repositories installed, in the zip file, then you have to go to install from repository, click on that, go into the Gaia repository, and click on video add-ons, and click on Gaia, and click install. And you can take the highest version that's there, 5.6.0. This takes a little while to install because it installs a lot of things. Gaia is a self-dependent add-on. Um, you don't have to go into all these separate other places. You make your settings in Gaia, and that's where they stay. When it installs YouTube, 
It asks you if you want to in execute the setup wizard. Gaia installs YouTube for you. Just say no. That's so it can get trailers and things like that. It, it, it'll still give them to you. It's just asking you if you want to set up YouTube for yourself. Just don't do that. Just say no. Let it run its own thing. You can see it's still going. It takes its time. But this is a really heavily self-dependent add-on. Once you see the check mark there, it's installed. So the check mark next to the Gaia name tells you that it's done. So everything is in there now. Now, what do you do at this point? It's really entirely up to you. You can set up Gaia yourself and leave it the way it looks now, and you'll be all set. If, as you scroll back, you see under video add-ons, now you have Gaia over here. It also added YouTube and extended info. That's fine, but you only really care about Gaia. You go to the home screen, Gaia is right here. So if you don't mind this layout and you just want to set up Gaia, you can stick to this layout all you want, and you're able to just you know, open Gaia from here and go to that. But if you want to make it a little more slick, I'm going to show you how to do that later and make like your own little build. We'll do that. But I like setting up Gaia itself while still here, just because everyone's kind of used to these settings and the way this looks. So it's a little easier to just set it up initially here if you're not used to like a different skin like Aeon Nox or something like that. I'm going to open Gaia. And it's going to eventually take me to a wizard, which for some reason it doesn't seem to do right away, but it will. Real quick, I want to show you guys something. To use Gaia to the best of its abilities and to stream with any of these, uh, you know, gray area, you know, site scraping streamer site uh, apps, you really should have some accounts. They're not very expensive, but you should have them because they give you way better links. These days, free links are being taken down or and overused left and right. So many people have apps and have Cody and have all of these third-party add-ons and third-party applications, and free servers only have but so much bandwidth. So because of that, you want to get yourself a little bit of paid services in here. That's my recommendation. You don't want to do it, you don't have to. I'll tell you what to do if you don't want to do it uh, with these same setups, and you can go ahead and stream and try to stream as much as you want. It's fine. But if you want to get some stuff that's, I'll give you, you know, a great setup for a relatively cheap price. Again, you're not paying me. I'm just telling you where to go to get it. And you can do that. So I'm going to show you now, right over here, real-debrid.com. You would go here on your phone or your computer and where it says sign up, you're going to click there and you create a free account. Once you have a free account, you sign in, all right, and you click on premium up there, and it will give you an offer. So this last one, which is number four, it's 16 euros basically for six months. So that is $17.56 US right now for six months worth of their access to their servers. When you break that down, that's like $2 and change a month, okay? Um, and the other one is premiumize.me. And again, same thing. You sign up for a free account, and then you'll be able to buy premium once you're in there. And if you look at the pricing, it costs more, but it also is a bit faster, has a lot more 4K links. Uh, it is 69.99 euros per month, I mean, per, uh, per year, okay? Which breaks down to approximately like $7 or so a month in that range, seven and change in US. So you can get both of these services for under $10 a month. If you can buy, you can just buy this twice if you want or pay every six months, whatever you wanna do. Real Debrid also gives you fidelity points, which you can redeem and extend your account by 30 days. So every time you pay for this, you may get 30 days extra, or you might have to pay twice uh, to get 30 days or three times to get 60 days. It depends on how many fidelity points they give you versus how many it costs for you to redeem them and give yourself a free 30 days. So Real Debrid actually gets even a little bit cheaper. Um, Premiumize has something similar. I don't know exactly how it works, but they do. I also have links to both of these in the description below under the affiliate links. 
And no, they don't pay me any money, just so you guys know. Uh, I have accounts with them, so if you click my affiliate link, they will extend my account for free if you use my link, but I, they don't pay me anything. I use these services myself, and I'm just giving you the best way to stream without hassle. All right? So go to these sites, real debridcom and premiumize.me. Sign up for free accounts. The free accounts won't actually do anything for you, but you need to make a free account before you can buy the um, paid account. All right, under ten dollars a month. Now, just so that you guys can get an idea of, you know, what that really is all about here, I'm gonna swipe myself back in here real fast, just to make a quick explanation before we go into the Cody part of everything. Um, I have T-Mobile for my internet service, so I get with that Netflix. They pay ten dollars of my Netflix. If I just have plain Netflix HD two connections at the same time, my Netflix is free. I have the 4K one, which costs $4, which costs $14. I just pay $4 more on my cell phone bill, and I have four connections with 4K. To me, for $4 a month, it's worth it. Hulu every year has a sale at a certain point of the year for $1.99 a month. Yes, it has ads, whatever, but who cares? It's $2 a month. So I pay a total of $6 a month for 4K Netflix and for everything that regular Hulu has to offer besides the live TV. You don't want, the, you, with these things, you don't need those services. I just think at those prices, they're a little bit more convenient than using all of this stuff. It's a little easier on you uh, for certain things to do. So they're just things to think about. There's cheap ways to get stuff, but you can get both of these services I just showed you for less than the cost of Netflix per month and drop Netflix if you have it, if that's what you need to do budget-wise, you know. You can watch everything that's on Hulu, on Netflix, all with these services, through these apps, no problem. You can watch things that are on regular TV, right, you know, an hour or two after they air, you're watching them, no problem doing it this way. But I just wanted to show you, you know, give you a little bit of a breakdown on how to do things cheaper than they normally cost as well, that you can get legit services for if you want to do that as well. And that's why I have them on my shield and why I use them, because I wouldn't pay the full price for them. But I try to find little deals. Who I think if you have Sprint as your service provider, Hulu comes with Sprint, so you don't pay for that. T-Mobile gives you uh, Netflix. So look at your service provider. Verizon's giving away Disney Plus right now for free. So whoever your cell phone service provider is, contact them. Make sure you get that free edition. It doesn't cost you anything. You might as well get it. All right, so let's go back. Let's say you have these accounts. I'm going to show you now how to put them in and make them all work. All right, so I'm going to go back over here. And we're going to, I'm in Gaia. It's not showing me anything yet, okay? But I'm going to back out of Gaia. I'm going to press back. And I'm going to open Gaia again, and it's going to do something a little different. It's now going to give me the disclaimer, which I must agree to. And it's going to ask me for the configuration wizard. I'm going to say, okay. Now, if you don't want these services and you don't have them, the best chance you have at links from Gaia is just using Reaper's setup. and go through it and you'll be set. It's a quicker setup. He's got a bunch of predetermined things in there for you. It basically loads a config file. This setup also works with the services I use, but I configure this to get the most amount of links possible that I can get. All right, so I'm gonna go down to the 10 minute setup. It doesn't take me 10 minutes. You'll see it's much quicker, but they're giving you an estimate. I'm gonna click it. It explains everything to you guys. Gaia supports multiple languages, yada, yada, yada. Continue. English is set as the default language. If you speak English, press keep. If you don't, change it. I'm going to keep it. If you want a secondary language, you can add one. I don't care. I'm keeping this. Gaia provides integration for various external services that improve the functionality of the add-on. You can activate your accounts or continue to use only basic services. Continue. Here we are at the space where we're at. If you have any of these accounts like Tract, I have a video for Tract on here. You can search Tract.tv on YouTube. You can see what it's about. It lets you keep track of TV shows and movies that you want to watch or have watched. Um, so it's good for that. Orion is like a scraper um, site. If you have an account for that, you can add it. For the purpose of this video, I showed you guys to get premium eyes and or real debris. If you can only get one and you're on a budget, real debris is the cheapest one to get. Go ahead and get it and, and, and include it. If you can get them both, get them both. If you can only get one, uh, for Gaia, premium eyes is better, if you ask me. Um, for other apps, Real Debrid's a little better.
It, so it all really depends. But I have 4K TVs. Premiumize is the best at giving me non-buffering 4K links. And together, they're just kind of like the unstoppable duo. There's other things too. I have Easy News. I have Aldebrid. But I'm just showing you the basis of getting going here and having a good experience. So on this list here, I'm going to activate my Premiumize. You've made your account. You've done everything. So now you're going to activate the account in here. And you're going to say, okay, I have an existing account because they already created it. It's going to give you instructions right on the screen where to go. Okay. So I'm going to follow those instructions on my phone. I'm going to type in where it tells me to go here. Premiumize.me forward slash device. And it's asking me for the pairing code, which is the token that's on the screen. So I'm entering that token on my cell phone now after going to that address and clicking submit. And it's asking me if I want to allow Gaia access. Yes, allow. And it's going to tell me in a second. Boom. Automatically, it just does that on the screen. The premiumize account was successfully added and activated. Continue. I'm going to do the same thing for Real Debrid. And I'm going to say activate account and an existing account. And I'm going to go to the website it tells me to go to here. And also type in the code that I find here. Um, that is so I'm entering the token on my phone again, basically the same exact process. Continue. After that, I don't care about any of this other stuff. You can leave it as is. Okay. If you have other accounts, like I said, put them in. But for me, it makes no difference. I'm just going to go to continue. Now, this is talking about the difference between internal and external providers. What we just added were external providers. Um, now we can configure on this screen which providers you want. If you have local things on your network that you want Gaia to pick up, you can have this on. I'm going to disable it. I don't care for it. Um, premium providers you need on because that's what Gaia uses. Okay, that's, the, that's how you get your real debris and your uh, premium eyes to show up. Now, external scrapers. You can turn all these off or leave them on. If you leave them on, you may get some free links, but it may take a little bit longer for it to search for things. Um, but that's up to you. For the purpose of this and to keep it as short as possible, I'll leave them on. But you can go as low as just leaving premium providers on and continue on from there. Continue. Um, it's asking you about playback after a show ends. So basically, if you're watching episode one, season one of a show, you want it to automatically play episode one, season two. In theory, this sounds like a great idea, but don't do it. It creates more problems than it's worth because you may get a bad link. It starts playing by itself, and then you got to click back and do a whole search all over again. You're better off just not being lazy. And doing each one manually, it doesn't take that long. So I'm putting manual. Um, detect failures is good. It's saying if providers are down, it will not search for them next time to speed up your process. But it will, every once in a while, go back to that provider and see if they're back online. And if they are, they'll, it'll add them back in. So I like to leave on detect failures. Providers need time to find streams online. It's basically asking you about your internet speed and device. Do you want it to configure an automatic one for you or use the default? Default is 60 seconds. Automatic depends on your device. I can click this and let it do an automatic setup. It will analyze my connection. I generally don't trust what it tells me under this connection anyway because it gives me a slower internet speed than I really have almost all the time. <clears throat> so I, you can, it doesn't hurt. You can check it out. If it, I'd say if it lowers your, uh, out, your, your timeout time a little bit, then it's worth it. Default is 60. If it gives you like 50 seconds or 45 seconds, you can try it. It, it should speed up your searching a little with, with still giving you plenty of links. You could also skip this part right here and just go right to default. It'll behave perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, at the end of this, I have the option to use default anyway. It's going to basically ask me if, I, if it likes my settings. 
See, my connection says 171.4 megabits. Uh, do I want to use this recommended timeout? I got to let it scroll up to see what the timeout is. Um, so it, to put it to 50 seconds. It's fine. I'll accept it. The standard is 60. I'm fine with that. Accept. Now it's going to talk about a VPN. I do recommend VPNs for you guys uh, almost anywhere now because things are getting funny in this world uh, if you're going to use this kind of stuff. But Gaia doesn't need to be the one that tells you uh, if your VPN is on or not unless you really need it to. So I'm going to, this is basically just asking you um, if you want, if, if you want Gaia to warn you if your VPN is not on. I'm going to skip that because uh, I know even if it's on or it's not. And then it's going to ask you if you want to do an internet speed test. I'm going to skip that. I'm done. That's it. That is the whole setup. I'm done. And I explained some of it. If you're doing it yourself, after you do it once or twice, it's going to give you some stuff about what the improvements are and what's going on. You can just press back and get out of that. And guy is all done. All right. Um, I do that in like three minutes, honestly, because I'm so used to it. I just run through it. If you do it a few times, you'll run through it really fast and you're all set. Three to five minutes, you should be good to go. All right. So guy is done. We're going to go back to this home screen. I don't particularly care to just have this look this way once I'm there. So I'm going to show you how to make it look pretty really quickly and really easily. All right. You're going to make your own little build. You're going to go back up to, we're going to go down to add ons. Okay. And we're going to go up to the package and we're going to go to install from repository. We're going to click on the Gaia repository. So we're going to go to look and feel. And we're going to go down to skin. And you have this Gaia Aeon Knox skin. Click on it. Click install. Choose the top one, version 4.0.0. And let it do its thing. It's going to download and change everything for you. And we're almost done with this setup. This is the longest thing of the whole setup. The most complicated one is getting this set up. It's really not that complicated. You know, it's just following the directions here. And you'll be. You'll be done a lot faster than I'm doing it in this video because I'm still explaining stuff. All right, so would I like to switch to this skin? Yes, I would. Then it's going to ask me if I want to keep this change. Yes. Now let's go back and take a look at what it looks like. You just keep clicking back on your remote until you get to the home screen right there. And it'll build some shortcuts for you. Let it do that, building the menu. I don't like this look in particular. Like, I don't like the menu in the middle. I prefer it on the bottom. I prefer to always see my submenus too. Um, so, I'm going to let it finish doing its thing. There it goes. And I'm going to adjust real quickly how this looks. I'm just going to show you how. Go over to system, press down. You're going to now see the submenu. Go over to skin, click on it. And you're going to go under main menu. Aeon Knox main menu horizontal position, put it to low and go to, um, where is it? Sub menu always visible. Yes. And watch what that does. We're going to go back and now I can see the sub menu automatically for each section and just go down to it. And it's at the bottom. I like seeing the big portion of the screen at the top, you know, right away. Now you'll notice that there's a Gaia section here, and it shows you movies, shows, um, that's doc, documentaries. You can search and you can go to tools, All right? But we're going to make this a little bit more cool. We're going to go back to system. We're going to go to skin, click on it. And this time we're going to go over to uh, set up the Aeon Knox main menu. Click on that. Click OK. Click on set up the main menu again. Go over to your left. Go down to the Gaia menu. Go back over to the right, and all we're going to do is mess with these widgets right here. So we're going to select widget one, widget style. For me, you can you can mess around with these. I like compact panel extended. It gives me the most amount of uh, movies or TV shows that I can see right on the home screen there. So I'm going to click that one, select widget. Now you have to choose where the widget comes from here. I'm going to guide you. Very easy. Press up on your remote because it's faster. Press up again, and you're going to get to add-on. Click that. Click video add-on. Click Gaia. Okay. It's going to give you the listing. Let's go to movies first. I'm going to click movies. And we're going to go to lists. 
I'm going to go to currently trending, which is at the bottom. It's getting the directory listing. And we're going to use that as a widget. And we're going to say done. And now you're going to get artwork and stuff like that, how you want it to look. Art, I always leave as poster myself, but you can mess with that. The case, I like glass because it's clean. Widget background, I like it to be clear because it's clean. Uh, panel label style. Um, you can do this in different ways. I like to show on focused item. Um, but you can check this out and see different stuff. It's not really that important, but you can just follow me. It's fine. Panel widget info, I like to enable that. Um, and then leave these alone, sort by, sort by. And you're going to click back. And we're going to go and do the same thing for widget two, but we're going to get TV shows instead of movies. So widget two, widget style, compact panel extended. Select widget, add on, video add on, Gaia, shows, lists. Currently trending. Use as widget. Done. And now we're going to go and do the same thing. Case, I like glass. You can mess around with these things all you want. I like clear. And a label style. Show and focus item for me. Panel widget info enabled, and we're done. Okay, now let's see what happens when you do that. I'm going to build your shortcuts. And let's go ahead over to the Gaia section and watch what happens. There you go. You got your movies on the bottom and your TV shows on the top. And if I go up there, these are like just, you're not all of them. You're just going to get the ones that are currently trending, which most people want to watch right now or have been watching. You'll get little information about them, the rating, everything, how long they are. And you can just click on these and it'll start searching for links for you. All right. So this is one way to, you know, go about it. I like that it changes the posters in the background for the shows and the movies. Cool. Other than that, you want to get into Gaia. You can just click right where Gaia is highlighted in blue. Uh, you know, you go down from here to the main menu on Gaia. That'll open up the main menu of Gaia. You can go straight to the movie section, so section. I'm blocking the documentary section, but it's behind me. Search and tools. So you can search for a movie, search for, you know, if you want to try to find one just by searching, you could do that. Tools you don't really have to mess with unless you're having an issue. You can rerun the wizard, you can put your cache inside of there, stuff like that. Um, but let's go ahead and just go into Gaia as an add-on, just so I can show you the sections in here. So when you go into movies, you have choices. It's the first thing there. You can go by categories, you can go by lists. I like the lists really. Um, you can search, you can check out people that are in movies. It's interesting, but let's go to lists. And I'm going to go ahead and just go to highest rated. That's going to show me highest rated of all time. Uh, this is the most popular of all time. Um, ones that have won like Oscars would be here. The highest boat grossing box office movies would go in order here. Things that recently premiered would be there. So that's like in theaters pretty much. Um, Currently trending in the most popular. That's the one we put the widget to on the home screen. And then you got new releases, home releases. You can check these out. I'm going to go right to highest rated just to show you something real quick, all right? Inside here, you'll click it. It's going to build its list. That takes a second. But from there, you know, I'll just pick a movie. I'll do a uh, Fight Club. All right. I'm going to click it. It's going to start searching just to show you how it works. What you want to end up with is the, the number of cached in the bottom left corner there. Uh, that's what you want to see. Cash will let you play things quickly. All Any numbers here are good numbers to pull up under streams found, but cash is what you really want to see.
and they're starting to pop in now. And it took 41 seconds, it finished figuring that out. And it's gonna load the streams on the screen. <clears throat> and Gaia, what it does is it loads up in order of resolution. So there's one 4K torrent here. That is cached. You see how it says cached in purple? And 4K on the left? So that's letting you know, obviously, it's 4K. And then as you scroll down, you'll get to 1080, 720, SD, stuff like that. But cache is what you want. And because I have premiumized and real to grid, it shows me where it's cached. So this one says cached PR in purple. That's cached on premiumized and on real to grid. So I can choose either one to play it off of because the file's already there. If you scroll down here, you see this one just says cached R. When I click it, it's going to give me an option of where I want to play it from. Okay. If I choose premiumize right now, it's going to have to download to premiumize because it's only cached at R, which is real to grid. So in this case, you want to click where it says cached because it's showing you that you'd have to get it on Debrid. It's already cached here. But if I want to play it, this one, which is on both, when I click it, I have cache cache, so I can use either one. If you can use either one, I generally use premiumize. If I can find one that's cached on premiumize, I like to use it first. It's just my preference uh, over that, you know. Uh, I find especially with higher bitrate files, like 4K, premiumized servers generally tend to handle it better. They're just more bandwidth, whatever reason, the servers are just better. Um, the real debrid works great too. It's fantastic. If you can just get real debrid, you'll have a way better experience than not having it. Um, it's a great service for the price for sure. So that's how that works. That's it. I'm not going to play anything because it's YouTube and I shouldn't play anything on here. But you, once you get past this page where you choose to play it, okay, if I were to click either one of these, it's going to start playing. That's what's going to happen. All right. And let's say you get a bad link for some reason and it doesn't play. You just go down to the next one and you try that one. But always get cached. If you scroll down, you'll see cache will end at a certain point. All right. Right there. That's where it ends. So these will download torrents if you ask it to, but you're not downloading them. So it's okay. It's going to download it to your choice. If I click this, going to ask me again if I want to send it to premiumize or real debrid. And now you'll have to wait because it wasn't already cached. It's going to start downloading. And once it has enough of the file, it'll start playing for you. That could take 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. So always use cache if it's available to you. If you really want to watch something more obscure and it's not there, you might have to wait. And you're going to use one of these options that don't say cache. Um, and that's really it. All right, so when it, I'll show you TV shows as well. So you can go back out of here and go down to shows. And in this way, again, I like lists for the most part. And we can go to, I don't know, highest rated shows of all time, right? And I'll go ahead and just search Game of Thrones. I'll go to season one. This is back in 2011, episode one, click it. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to search. You let it do its thing. Don't touch anything. Don't interrupt it. It's going to find stuff for you. Now, season one of Game of Thrones was the only one that they made in 4K uh, released for. So you'll see that you'll get 4K links in season one. You won't get it in other seasons. far up to nine cached files. And we ended up with 28 cached files by the time we were done.
No, it's still going. 32. 40 cached files. 42. This add-on, Gaia, by far, shows you the most results more than any other source I've ever seen, which is why I like to use it, especially if I'm looking for 4K. So here you go. Two cached on premiumized in 4K. Uh, this is cached on premiumized in Real Debrid. If you just see cached R, that's Real Debrid only, um, like that. Okay. So you got 4K options up here on premiumized. And if you have decent internet, it should play pretty damn well. And look, eight channel audio, 4K, H.265. So that's 4K HDR with eight channel audio, Dolby Digital Atmos HD. Okay, so those are, should be awesome, awesome links. I wish I could play them for you, but I can't because I'll get in trouble here. But there you go. That's how it works. All right, you can do the same thing from any of these sub menus down here on the home screen. All right, you can search. You can do, uh, you know, go to movies or shows directly, documentaries, or you can go up here and if something you want to watch is right here, you can just click it from here and it'll start the search the same way. All right. So any movie you click on will do the same search. Go up again, any TV show you click on will do the same search. That's it. When you want to leave this, make sure you go over to the power menu, all right, and you hit quit, which is behind me, but hit it, and it's going to shut it down. It's going to take you back to the home screen, okay? Um, the only other thing I'm really going to go over right now for setting up, I'll do cinema and Zion, and that's going to be real quick. A lot faster than these. I'll go into cinema. You have to allow whatever it asks you to. Accept its disclaimer. Say OK at the bottom of the change logs. And it starts you off on TV shows. And you can change categories with the arrow that you're on. So you can go popular, trending. All right. You can search through different categories that way. If you want the hamburger menu on the left. You can search on the right, though, if you want to search. Uh, hamburger menu on the left. First thing you want to do, you can change to movies and favorites, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is awesome in this, in this app. Um, you can do favorites in Gaia too, but it's not quite the same. Uh, I'll have a whole new Gaia video pretty soon. Favorites, it's, this is the most convenient of all the apps, honestly. It just doesn't get as many links as Gaia, but if you want to just watch something and you don't care if it's definitely 4K, or maybe you're willing to accept a 720 stream on something, this is going to work out great for you. Most of the time you can get 1080 though. Um, but it definitely doesn't pull 4K the way Gaia does. But we're going to go down to settings first, okay? <clears throat> and the first thing I always do, remember I told you about VLC earlier? So if you're trying to watch movies or TV shows on this and it's giving you trouble with cinema being the default player, you can click and change it to VLC because you installed that. Don't click MX or C-Leaf because you didn't install those. I generally don't have a problem on the shield with cinema. I'm going to leave it. With TV Zion, it's another story, the other app. I switch that to VLC because it doesn't like to give me audio and it's built in player for some reason. Choose poster image size is probably the only thing that you really mess with too much in here. I go from large to medium. Why? Because it gives me a much more appealing screen to me. I can get eight things across instead of five. And it's still big enough that I can see what it is. Let's go back to the settings. All right. Um, You can tell it not to show episodes that haven't aired. I don't really care. They, they denote it with some italics. I like to know sometimes when an episode is going to air next. So I leave that on and I can see the next episode that hasn't aired yet. You can't watch it yet, but you'll know the date it airs or something like that. Um, down here, you have, if you're using uh, Real Debrid and Premium Eyes, I would turn on Show HD only, all right, because you don't want to watch crappy SD videos. Um, and then. What else do you have here? You have uh, short links by quality, leave that on. And by size, that's fine. Because size generally equates to quality for the most part. You can change providers that you enable, but you can leave this alone. It works great out of the box. But what you're looking for down here is to go and log into your accounts. So this takes Real Debrid, All Debrid, and Premiumize. We have Real Debrid and Premiumize if you made your accounts for them. So I'm going to go log into Real Debrid. Same thing again, going right back on my phone. I'm going to real debrid.com um, slash device. 
and I'm going to enter the code. Hit continue. It's going to tell me that I'm in. Okay. And then I'm going to go to premiumize and I'm going to go to premiumize.me slash account because now this is different. I have to enter my API key. Once you have your account, it's not asking me. This is the one that's a little different. And, whoops. Once you're in an account, I'm going to go to the big screen here. And I'm going to show you that it's asking you for an API key. On your account screen, you're going to see API key. Don't click renew, click where it says show API key. Okay, do this yourself. Don't, I'm, I have to enter that. I can't show you my API key. I, if I click renew, I could show it to you, but then I'd have to reauthorize all of my stuff, which I don't wanna do, because anyone that gets your API key and your customer ID can access your account and you don't want that happening. So I am going to put in my API key off screen here. And I'm gonna say okay with my API key. And it signed me in, but I can't really show you this anymore because now my API key is visible. Um, well, I can a little bit. I just got to go past that to here. So let me push this back in. I won't go up. I'm going to go over here. And under here, you can check show Debrid only. It won't show links that aren't from Debrid. But you can show links that aren't from Debrid. It's fine. You don't need to do that. But turn off resolve premium links. Check this box because it can wreak havoc on the paid providers. It's going to like sort of resolve every link to make sure it works before you click it. And that, while it sounds great for you, is terrible for the service provider because it's actually like pinging them repeatedly. It's almost like a little mini DDoS when it does that. So you'll find that sometimes service providers get issues from people doing the wrong things like that. And that's it. You don't have to change anything else here. Turn on, after you enter your two accounts, turn off resolve premium links and I'm gonna click back, okay? Now I'm in and I'll show you. Basically, if you want to make favorites, let's say Homeland is one of your favorite shows, you click Homeland, and up here you see the heart. You can click that, you'll add it to your favorite. And let's back out and find another show. Let's just say, um, you know, I like, I don't know, Law and Order. And you can click it for a heart and put it in. Okay? And if you like, I'm just going to make a few so you can get an idea. Um, we'll go to The Rookie and we'll heart it and go back. And then we'll get Vikings and we'll heart it and go back, okay? Uh, and then I'm gonna switch to movies real fast. Just wanna give you an easy rundown of how this works. I'm gonna switch over to movies. And normally you wouldn't really heart a movie except a movie you haven't watched that you wanna watch. So I don't know, we'll just do, um, you know, let's try something like, I don't know, whatever, IP Man 4, okay? When you click a movie, it automatically starts searching for links. Why? Because there's no, um, you don't have to go through seasons. So the streams are showing up on the side right away. But there's your heart in movies. It's in a different place. I just went to it under the download. Um, and if you want to watch them, you just go over here and you click on one to watch it. And you see that it's starting with 1080p files, giving you a bunch of them. Then you get to 720s. All the yellow ones are your, the ones that come from Real Debrid or Premiumize. All the white ones are free ones that come from here. So you see how much more these things give to you that you wouldn't have if you didn't pay for them. All right. Um, I'm not going to click one to play it, but you click it, it plays. If it doesn't play, you just go down to the next one and you play that one. So I'm going to back out and I'll, I'll real quick run back to TV shows just to show you. Um, if you click on a TV show, let's go to like Altered Carbon, it, you're going to see seasons. Now, if you want to watch from season one, 
let's say you don't want to add it to favorites, right? Go to season one, it's a little different. At the top here, you have 1.1 slash 2, 3, 4, up to 10. The blue line indicates that you're at 1, 1, all right? You go down and you press play. It starts searching for links. That's basically how that works. And you'll see that your results are less here, but you'll generally get something good to watch, and it's the fastest, easiest thing to get into. I generally tend to use it most of the time. Unless I really want to watch something in 4K or really high quality with crazy audio, Gaia is your, is your place to go, what, I, what we just did before. But as you can see here, I'm only getting one 4K, and that's from the paid service. The rest of them right now are 720. So this particular show is not looking great here with 1.1. If you go into Gaia, you'll probably get a whole lot more options. All right, so that's how that works. And the last thing I'll show you, you know, you have your search, which is over here. That's pretty straightforward. You click it, you type, you click on what you're searching for. But I'll show you how the favorites works. So you can see that everything's here. You have IP Man. If it's a TV show, it has TV. It's a little circle on the top. You can also go over to your settings here and say show TV shows only. You can say show movies only. You can say show all, and then you can sort them by A to Z. If you, you know, but by default, just going to show all, it's putting movies first and then TV shows after. That's kind of how it's working. All right. So you can mess around with that. And that's it. From there, every week when your show comes out, you know, like that you want to watch, I know Vikings airs on Wednesdays, uh, The Rookie airs on Sundays, Law & Order is Thursdays, Homeland is Sunday. So you watch it, and it's going to end up showing you. You see how it says 0 of 10 watched? You can mark them watch too. So let's say you've watched all the seasons of Vikings. It's a bit of a pain. But you can go to Season 1, Episode 1, and down here you can check the box that says watch. Right? Um, all the way up until Season 6, if you really wanted to. Uh, you could do that. but It'll, it then will automatically know what show you should be watching next, which episode. So that's how that works. We're done in here. I'm going to exit this app. It's all set up. It's ready to go. That was it. Zion is very similar. You open it, um, it's giving you, you know, all these options for joining their Zion club. If you don't have to. You can cancel that. It's going to give you information. Okay, we'll back out of that. And the, the layout's a little different, but it's still kind of similar. You can go TV, movie, CMDB. So you can switch your movies to TV shows up here, all right, um, back and forth. And on your side, you're going to get settings, okay? Just go to your settings and go to accounts and the Brid services. You have Real Debrid and Premiumize, and you can add your accounts the same way. Uh, for the sake of shortening the video, I mean, I guess I'll just click add, you know, but uh, just so you can see, but it's the same, same thing again. You know, I'm not going to add it right now. I'm just going to say done. Uh, fail to add account. And then I'm going to go back to premiumize and click add. And it's telling me to go to the device and use a pin this time. And then you'd say done. But fail to add account because I didn't add it. All right. Um, but that's really it. You can customize grid, visuals, same thing to here uh, to some extent. <clears throat> But it's kind of the same deal. You go to TV, it has airing today, aired recently, popular in 2020. If you like this layout, you can do it. Enter your information, it works very similarly. But as far as this goes, on the side here, we have home, search, watching, grid manager settings. But if you go into something like, you know, The Walking Dead, let's just say, um, you don't see the same options in here. Like you can't part stuff and make it in favorites. Uh, you know, things like that. But you can, it knows you haven't watched anything, so it's trying to say watch 1.1. Or you can click on the seasons, go into them, and then you can click on episodes. And you get 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. So that's how that works. You know, it, it's fine. It works. I prefer by far using cinema, but Zion is good. And when you're ready to leave the app, you just go to exit. That's how that works, guys. Everything else is very straightforward. 
enter your own Netflix, your own Hulu, your own Prime, your, you know, sign into your Plex, enter your YouTube account, Twitch account, um, and then your, you know, whatever else you have, whatever you want to enter. That's it, guys. Uh, this was as short as I could really make this video. So I know it's still kind of long, but it's way shorter than the four hour version. It's about half of that, uh, right here. So I'll do individual things, diving deeper into settings of Gaia, settings of other stuff. Um, you know, how to change certain stuff around. I'll do that in individual videos. But this is your honest to God, uh, you know, set up your shield to be an awesome stream machine. You just did it if you followed this video. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Stay supreme. I'm out of here. I love you guys. I'll be back soon. This is going to be the first 4K upload, by the way, so hopefully it turns out good. All right? Peace out, everybody. Stay supreme. Talk to you all later.